Hi, I'm Elliot Fishman, and welcome to Facebook Live. It's um, on uh, the Thursday, October 26th. It's been a busy week. I was away the last three days in part. I was at the Lost Garden Foundation, which Lost Garden uh, supports our work, and they support many people's work in the realm of early detection of pancreatic cancer. So I had the privilege of being with some really, really smart people from Hop, from Hop a couple people as Jaffe, Bert Vogelstein, uh, Laura Wood, plus a bunch of people from many different places, from the Salk Institute to Duke to Dana Farber and everything in between. And so it was a real honor getting the chance to present. It's one of those times where you get nervous, but I'll show you some of the stuff at some point. The work we're doing with Microsoft, I think, thanks to Microsoft, is outstanding. And I think um, we held our own. We did a presentation. 45 minutes and I think it was well received and um, I think I was pleased by all the work we're doing here so it was great and now I'm back at work at working away catching up like everybody end of October hard to imagine weather's still nice everything's still good uh, this talk's gonna be on the liver and it'll be on liver masses I was gonna speak about pancreas today but everyone because I was gonna be at the Lust Garden I was gonna speak about some of the stuff I heard and saw um, and thought about, but of course next month, which is November, is Pancreatic Cancer Month. So we'll save some of our discussions for Pancreatic Cancer Month and instead speak about liver cancer. In terms of imaging, CT, MR are all strong in the liver. MR has certain uh, helpful features, but we're going to focus on CT. Rule out liver mass. I'm doing dual phase imaging. In the old days we did non-contrast, now it's arterial and venous rarely do delayed. Um, you think about tumors that are vascular, they'll show better arterial, and that's going to be your basic hepatomas, hepatocellular carcinoma, 90% are hypervascular, and then it's going to be some of the metastatic disease, renal cell carcinoma, for example, thyroid cancer, neuroendocrine tumors are all going to be hypervascular, so if you want to see them, particularly small lesions, you're going to need to do arterial phase imaging. We'll always do arterial and venous because some lesions just end up being seen better on venous. And also you need to look at the portal vein and SMV and vessel patency and vascularity, which you'll only get part of on arterial phase imaging. When we think about hepatic tumors, we think about, again, primary versus metastatic. Most lesions we see obviously malignant are gonna be metastatic. But we do see a reasonable number of hepatomas. Hepatomas are more common in patients with hepatitis, and hepatitis is a worldwide epidemic, so we see lots of patients. Remember our rules, if you have a cirrhotic liver and there's a vascular lesion, it's not gonna be hemangioma. Hemangiomas tend to be vascular pools, and so when you have cirrhosis and fibrosis, the lesions shrink and collapse, and you don't see them. If you see a vascular lesion in a patient who has cirrhosis, you better be thinking about an HCC. Majority of HCCs are vascular. They can be solitary or they can be multiple. HCCs are one of the things that bleed, right? Spontaneous bleeds. We talk about hepatic adenoma first, then we put in hepatoma. Everything else is a distant third from Mets to hemangiomas and the like. Hepatomas can be solitary, big or small, and they can be multiple, big or small. Um, I mentioned about bleeding a moment ago. Hepatomas can present with bleeding, which can make it a little bit tricky to make the diagnosis. But the number of cases I see with bleeding uh, presentation is gonna be small. I more commonly see bleeding after it's biopsied. Again, I still say that when you uh, think about uh, bleeding, you better think about hepatic adenoma first. So that becomes very important. I also um, mentioned um, in terms of looking with dual phase imaging, make sure you narrow the windows. Use MIP imaging to look at the vessels because what you want to look for is neovascularity. Often neovascularity may be a bit harder to see if you don't do MIP imaging. Also to remind you that when you're doing liver imaging for tumor, you wanna be injecting five cc's per second, depending on patient size 
100 to 120 cc's usually works out very nicely but fast injections with reasonable volumes are very important and again as I mentioned axials coronals and MIP imaging we like volume rendering as well but MIP is especially good for looking at neovascularity particularly when it's very subtle so you want to do that um, that becomes very important some other helpful hints uh, when lesions are very small and non serotic liver, I think that's more of a challenge because then you say, could this be a tiny 8cc or is it a hemangioma with flash filling? That can be somewhat problematic. Not every HCC is in a serotic liver. So if you don't have a serotic liver, it doesn't mean you don't be thinking about an HCC. Think about it. It may need to do MR that can be helpful. PET can be helpful occasionally or biopsy. We also want to talk about um, metastasis. As I mentioned, meds are common. Know what the primary tumor is. Colon cancer is typically going to be hypovascular, better seen on venous, and probably, you know, you only need venous, but if you're doing neuroendocrine tumors, if you're doing pheochromocytomas, if you're doing thyroid cancers, um, you better be looking at arterial phase mapping as well. Lesions can be small and may only be seen in the arterial phase. So that's some of those helpful hints I give you. Let's see, I'm looking at people who are here. Uh, Hussam Hussein, I'm sure there's no relationship, but he is from Iraq and El Bozi Mahmoud, I'm not sure where he's from, but uh, we'll say hello to him as well. Um, some of you always wonder about where people come from, from our talks or come to listen. Uh, we have over 220 countries. I probably can't name more than 100, but more than 220 countries. We have people visit us to listen to our lectures, look at Facebook, look at our website. So we do appreciate everybody. And uh, I guess probably everyone, most everyone listens to me in English, but I know now on Facebook and Google, you can get things translated automatically and supposedly it's pretty good, but I, um, I'm not one to say, so hopefully you guys know how well the translations work. It's always a challenge uh, translating, particularly people like me who talk fast. It's also a challenge, particularly in medicine, uh, unless you get the words down, but um, I think it's getting better. All the voice recognition and everything else seems to be much better than it used to be. Um, what else can I look at? I can recommend you listen to some lectures. There's a series of new lectures coming out on liver, malignant liver tumors uh, over the next month or so. I think they'll be coming out. We have thousands of cases in the teaching file of CTSS. We have lots of pearls. I added a lot of pearls this week, but hundreds, even thousands of pearls on the liver. A lot of malignancy, so you should look there. And then look at the teaching file. Just look at cases. And again, lectures, cases, um, use a little bit chat GPT. What more can you ask for? So with that, I'll stop there. Uh, anyone has any questions, it's a good time to ask. If not, you can always ask me after, and I'll try to get to them. But with that, and I wish everybody a great day. See you later.